because it, it's not going to be quiet. Okay, we are live. Hello, welcome to Ease. I created this podcast to help the aspiring entrepreneur get the ideas out of your head and get into action so you can get money in the bank and start living the life of passion, purpose, and ease that we were all born to live. My name's Candy Tolentino. I'm your host. I've done this three different times with three very different businesses. In other words, I launched a business and I took it from idea to grossing at least six figures in some instances, seven figures in the first year. And I had no idea though, what I was doing, how to get started in the beginning, how to secure business financing, how to yeah. pitch myself to stores and to business partners and how to even package my product, things like this. So I know that there are a lot of entrepreneurs in the same boat and it is my passion, it's my mission to help you contribute your talent, your art, your gifts to the world. In the meantime, I also know there are lots of gurus out there promising the world. Lots of people who say, if you just buy their system, you're going to find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And in my experience, there's a lot of fluff. So recently... There's a billionaire by the name of Grant Cardone who's been advertising this unbreakable business system. He says, we're headed for winter. Mm -hmm. We're headed for a recession. And how mm -hmm. do we secure our businesses and ourselves to ride the wave of any recession or any economy? And mm -hmm. so he's promising a lot. And what I decided to do was use myself as a guinea pig on this show. I bought his system for $1,000, not a bad price point at all, mm -hmm. bought the system. I'm going through it. I will travel to his in-person seminar this Monday in Las Vegas. Yay. And in the meantime, we're going through the coaching right now for the unbreakable system. And mm -hmm. I connected with another entrepreneur. Her name is Dr. Jania Klingenberg. Yes. Did I not butcher it? Nope. Perfect. <laughs> okay. But, but for ease of use, everyone calls her Dr. J. She's got a side D in clinical psychology. It's mm -hmm. the PhD equivalent, right. uh, the side D. And she works with adults and children on all different facets of mental health, especially helping business owners to really pay attention to, the, to mental health in the workplace. And I thought it would be great for both of us since we purchased Grant's system and we're going through it together to talk about our first impressions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. our goals and what we think. Do we think it's more fluff? Do we think it's going to help our businesses get to the next level? That, those are the questions. So thank you for joining us. Thank and please help me welcome Dr. J. Hey. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Hi. And thank you for having me, Candy. Thank you for taking this time out. Like, so here's what we did last minute on a Saturday. <laughs> Jania had a birthday party for her three-year-old. I'm running around with Brave. We tried to record yesterday. The audio wasn't working. And so I was like, today, can we go live? We're just right. going to go live. Let's do it. Speed. Just, and that is one thing I will say I've learned from Grant thus far. He says that money follows speed. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, how many times have you had an idea? You know it's a good idea. You know you have a winning product. And you sit on it. And you sit on it. And you sit yep. on it some more, and then somebody else launches your so, product. Boy, that makes you so mad. <laughs> what is wrong with us? So I, we didn't even get this ideal at all. Like, I don't have music playing for this podcast. Right, right. It's not my traditional setup, but I, I thought, let's go live. Let's just talk yep. to the people, yep. let's and let's share our experience vetting one of these systems that promises to help you make multi-millions in mm -hmm. your business. Yep. So, Dr. J, can you share with us why did you sign up for the challenge and what do you hope to gain from it? I signed up because um, as a mental health coach, um, I worked in the in the mental health industry for like 20 years um, and I'm transitioning into, I transitioned to coaching like a, a year and a half ago and it was like a bunch of different systems that I had seen, put it that way, that I had to learn. And I was just like, it, it, it was just too much. So I was trying to figure out like, what can I do, um, you know, to scale my business, to get the word out there. So I have more impact, you know, working with women and businesses and, you know, what can I do? 
Um, and I actually came across Grant like two days before the challenge. So I wasn't familiar with him um, at all. Uh, on the advertisement, um, I did saw T.D. Jakes and I love me some T.D. Jakes. Uh, and I know he's not going to put his name with some garbage. I just I just respect him in that way that he's just um, the caliber of person that he is, you know, um, as a bishop, bishop at the Potter's House. I just didn't think that he would put his name with something crazy. So, um, you know, I, I signed on. I like anything free. Um, and what I'm, I was hoping to get out of it, though, is, you know, first of all, I'm just going to be honest to make money. Right. Mm -hmm make money doing what I'm doing because I'm good at what I do. I help people solve problems. I help put mental health first. I help people change their mindset um, in order to think different, in order to change their lives. But I need to do it and make money because I do it free. You know, okay. um, I, I love helping people, but um, I need paychecks. And for revenue, right? Yeah. Like you want to 10X your yeah, bottom line. I got to keep it real. You know, yeah. it's like everybody's like, no, it's not about the money. Yeah, it is about the money too. I do want to help people and be impactful. But at the same time, I have a family, as you said, you know, birthday party early today. I have a family I have to care for as well. Um, and what I have is a value. And looking at Grant's program, um, I just saw many aspects that I still need that I, I even realize even more. Some things I do naturally, some things I really need to focus more intently on and doing purposefully so that it can generate income for myself, um, whether okay, it be so intentional I, income or passive. Let me take a moment and break that down. I think you're like a lot of coaches, entrepreneurs, people who even work W-2 jobs who yep. want to make more money, who have a powerful skill set, but don't know how or where to start or maybe don't believe it's possible. Mm -hmm. So I like that someone like Grant at least shifts our mindsets into believing that it's possible to yeah. literally multiply yeah. your income yep. 10 times and greater. I like that. Mm -hmm. What were some of you just found, found out about him two days before you signed up yeah, for his challenge. Yeah, That's yeah. impressive that <laughs> you acted with speed. I have yeah. heard about him for a while because he's in oh. the sales arena. But when I saw this poster, can you see my screen? Yep, I can see it. Okay, so when I saw this, I kind of thought, hmm, I was deciding, how do I feel about Grant? Mm -hmm. Like, how do mm -hmm. I feel? Because he's kind of a polarizing figure. He I is. did watch. <laughs> he, okay, so for anybody who doesn't know or is not familiar with Grant Cardone, he just was on this TV show, I think two years ago, called Undercover Billionaire. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with Undercover Millionaire. That's a different show. Mm -hmm. Undercover Billionaire takes a very successful business person drops them in the middle of a city that they've never been to before with only $100 in their pocket. Mm. They don't even have their own cell phone with any contacts. They give them a new cell phone and they give them an old beaten down truck. That is it. So they don't have food. Wow. They don't have shelter. They don't have anything other than the hundred dollars. So I watched Grant on that show when I decided to sign up for his challenge. Mm. And I thought on this show, he's a, he's definitely full of himself. <laughs> He's confident. He's a little <laughs> like, obnoxious. At time. It's reality TV. Yeah. What well, is, it, is it TV? Like <laughs> it's it's on Discovery Go. I literally downloaded Discovery Go so I could watch the show. Wow. And I was impressed. There's a black woman on the show, mm -hmm. venture capitalist. I was super mm -hmm. excited to see her journey. There's a white woman on the show who's mm -hmm. a construction mogul, and there's Grant. So the three of them are all tasked. With this challenge, only $100 in their pocket and an old truck wow. and a, no cell phone. And they have to try to make a million dollar business within 90 days. So valued at a million dollars. It doesn't wow. mean they have a million dollars in their pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A business worth a million dollars. So I watched it and I thought, eh. But and when I saw this poster in particular that I pulled up or this advertisement for the Unbreakable Challenge, I noticed something interesting. Do you? I hope you all can see this. At home, if anybody's watching on YouTube, you can see it. If not, and you're just listening, I will describe it for you in a minute. But Dr. J, what do you think when you see this ad? So because it was brought to my attention, I have to be honest, like you brought that to my attention um, because now I see it more in my face now. Yeah, um, is the two women um, with those seductive looks kind of ish, you know, um, uh, uh, Elaine more so than than Stormy, uh, because I didn't notice that before until you said it. Um, okay. 
Um, and, and I thought that was really pivotal um, in looking at, you know, women in corporate America or women in business in general. Yeah. So I'll say for me too, in being exposed to Grant for the first time and his wife, Elena. So Elena is mm -hmm. the woman who is our left of Grant, Grant Wright, our left to him. She's yeah. the woman with mm -hmm. her hands, um, like touching her face. Mm -hmm. And then Stormy Wellington is the woman to our right. Right. She's a black woman. I really enjoyed her talk during the I challenge. If you don't know who she is, you're right. She's worth looking up. Stormy you Wellington. She went up. from being a ninth grade dropout, a former stripper, to a self-made multimillionaire. Yep. Hello, girl. Yep. Go get yep. it. Yep. I like her. Yeah. When I saw this ad, though, I thought, huh, only two women on the poster, and both of them are touching their faces and mm -hmm. do women still feel the pressure even in corporate America, even as business moguls, do we still have to be sexy, seductive, mm -hmm. attractive? Mm -hmm. Like the men, I, I'm not trying to diss on any men in the poster. Mm -hmm. I like all right. of them. The men are not worried about looking attractive. Right. But so you know, I what's will... interesting though, to think about too is did they, did they, did, did they do that themselves? Maybe unintentionally, or were they directed? Oh, you mean the women? Oh, I totally yeah. think that it was their of their own volition. Oh, I think really? it was intentional. Okay. I don't yeah. think they were coached into like maybe the photographer would say that, but let's talk about that. Would a photographer say to a man, Oh, try wait, put your hand near your face? Like no. men don't do that. No, they don't. They they would tell them to make more stoic um positions for them to look, you know, uh uh more respected. Whereas like with a woman, I've heard photographers say before, you know, oh, you know, give those seductive eyes or do this or do that, you know, you know, for different pictures and stuff like that. And I can, I, I, I like I said, I didn't see it until you pointed it out um, because I wasn't even focusing on the women because I didn't know who they were. So um, that wasn't even my focus until, you know, you brought that to my attention. I was like, whoa, like that's serious, you know? Yeah. So I just, it's just food for thought, but it did make me think, will women ever reach a place where we're freed from the burden of having to be attractive to yep. get attention? Yep. Yep. I don't just think so. that out. I don't think so. I, I think because, you know, we have more women in high places right now, mm -hmm. but it's still a mindset that still exists um, in many industries. So um, I think... Uh, and it could be unintentional, you know, that women sometimes do things um, because they know they are, are in a field which is dominated by males, you know, that they feel like they have to do certain things, dress a certain way, act a certain way. Um, and I, I sometimes, like I said, I think is really, you know, unintentional. You know, when you go into a board meeting, you're the only woman or one of a few women. How do you dress? What do you do? What do you put on? What do you consider when you're getting dressed? You know, um, again, not that it's intentional sometimes, but um, I think in the back of our minds, we always have this, how am I presenting um, to the men in this industry? Um, am I taken serious? Am I not? And how do I get to where I got to go? You know, the position that I want. And I keep, I don't know if you can see, I keep trying to enlarge your frame, by the way, and I can't get yeah. it to, you it, well, you have what's a, going on? You have a I'm, side by side. I like the side by side, but when you yeah. speak, I want you to be larger. Anyway, yeah. moving on. That just was food for thought for me because I thought when I first saw Elena, I thought I she's drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like wh whatever she's selling, I'm buying. Right. <laughs> phenomenal she right. looks amazing but i thought is she is she a trophy wife or is there more beneath the surface so i'm still waiting to find that out with the mm. whole cardone package yeah. when it comes to grant i gotta say i kind of like him i yeah, kind of i like he's a family man i you could tell he adores his daughters i like mm -hmm. he's putting his wife on stage mm -hmm. i i respect that yeah. so and I'm, as a matter of fact he say he said like it is he gets to the point. He said it like it is. Um, and I, I think that's where that sense of arrogance come from as well. Um, uh, and that's kind of what I work with women on as well. It's like when you know what you know what you know, don't let nobody else tell you anything different. That's kind of how he is. He's like, well, y'all can't tell me nothing, you know, because he have reached a level, you know. And like he said in one of the one of the days, you know, yeah, it's kind of a little arrogance that come with that. Expect okay. it. 
That's true. Now, I personally don't think you have to be arrogant to connect mm -hmm. with people and get your message across. I like mm -hmm. humility. I appreciate that. Yeah. I do like confidence. I'm big on confidence, though. I even yeah. I've done a show on confidence yeah. hacks. So as women, especially, I wonder, can we own our power? Mm -hmm. And can we come across as confident without coming across as the B word? Well, or... but as, as women of color, is that possible? Because yeah. when we stand our ground and we speak for what we believe in, are we the angry, angry black woman? I have completely been stereotyped as the angry black woman. Me too. So me too, I... because I don't allow people to tell me anything anymore. I used to be that person. You know, they didn't say much and didn't, you know, argue or didn't have confrontations. But I got to the point as I redeveloped myself, it's like, wait a minute, who, who are you to tell me what I know and what I don't know? You know, and I'm not going to allow you to do that. So I started to push back. And then it was like, you know, I had a boss tell me one time that because I came, I was like, why are the other, the, why are there other staff members not taking what I'm saying serious? And I was told it's because, I'm, I'm aggressive. And I'm like, am I aggressive or am I assertive? Because there's a difference. Why am I considered aggressive? I can't believe they labeled you aggressive when you were asserting yourself. Well, that's that's interesting. Interesting. it is. It was very interesting. And I had to explain the difference between aggressive and assertive. I can, I'm aggressive when I'm saying something that you don't agree with and I refuse to back down. Hmm. I'm considered aggressive. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I th and would it be different if you were a man? And especially would it be different if you were a female. Caucasian man? Like female. Yes. Yeah. So the, all interesting topics. I feel like the theme for today that we can leave our audience with is what's the difference between arrogance and confidence? Mm -hmm. And what's the difference between being aggressive and assertive? Because you will not get any place in business without asserting yourself Correct. unapologetically. Un unapologetically. Like you can't apologize every day. And I was at apologize. Oh my gosh. I used to say something, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I don't apologize anymore. You know, I'm not there to be your friend either. I'm there to do my job, to make an impact, to do what I do, to help women, to help businesses, um, put mental health first. And if you have an issue with what I'm saying or what I'm doing, we can talk about it. It's okay for me. We can talk about it. If you're uncomfortable talking about it, that's your problem, your issue, not mine. And that's not arrogance. That's confidence because I know what I know what I know. And I know I can help. I know I can change your mindset about things. I know I can make you think a little different, you know, in certain ways. And that's okay. I had to be okay with being assertive because my emotions and my feelings was just as important as the other person's as I was, you know, trying not to hurt you know, initially years ago when I wouldn't really stand up for myself. And it's like now I, I would not let anybody treat me any kind of way without me saying something. You don't have to agree with me. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me. And you might not agree with me, but that's OK, because I'm going to say what I have to say, because I know who I am. A amen to that. And I can share, I guess, as a closing thought to the audience that the successes that I've had in business have always come alongside me having to assert myself. Mm -hmm. They've always come alongside me being willing to knock on another door when a door was slammed in my face, mm -hmm. being able to explain to someone, even after they said no, not taking no for an answer and yep. explaining yep. why exactly. I, exactly. I was so confident in my product. I knew that it could change people's lives. I knew that there was a place in the market for it. I, always had to assert myself. If I accepted no, I never would have made it like past my front door. I received so many no's, so many doubts. People thought veganism 20 years ago, they thought it was so fringe. It was so You're vegan? crazy. Oh, I'm oh, vegan. Oh. And I had, yeah, my first successful business was a raw food wow. vegan company, the first of its kind in the country to be nationally wow. distributed through Whole Foods. And That's Whole awesome. Foods, when I went for that first meeting, they looked at me like I had two heads. When wow. I said I have a raw vegan, they were like raw, raw vegan. Why? Why? And now the veganism now? now. Look at it now. Wow. And, wow. Now, and so I have to say, when I, I can remember that initial meeting with the buyer at Whole Foods and trying to convince her that a raw vegan product would sell. Mm -hmm. And then later on, seeing whole sections of Whole Foods dedicated to raw vegan food. Yep. That's where it is now. And it just... Mm -hmm. 
my heart swells when yes. I think about the journey. But guess what? Yes. It, the world only changes from people who yep. assert themselves and will not take yep. no for an answer. Yep. So if you're within earshot of this message, yep. I think it's a sign that you're Keep not pushing. supposed to take no for an answer. Keep pushing. No means next opportunity. Yes. Yes. No means next. What else? How yep. can I? I always try to come from a place of how can I? Not why I can't. Well, how can yep. I make this happen? How can this yep. come together? So in closing, we're actually missing our live coaching <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> okay. We were dedicated to getting this live done. Yes, yes. So what can we leave the audience with? I have two questions for you, Dr. J. Number one, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur who maybe is having mental health challenges, dealing with anything from ADHD to anxiety, depression, any of that, but they still have a vision mm -hmm. of a better life? That's number one. And number two, then you have to tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. If yeah. No okay. So actually, the interesting thing is I'm ADD. Um, and we kind of had this conversation. Um, so... Uh, that was a struggle in itself, even just getting my doctor degree. But when you have a mental health concern um, as an entrepreneur, the one thing I tell people to do is treat yourself as though you are uh, an employee, even if you are a, a sole proprietor. Stop and write down the things that you feel like and think that you need in order to make yourself feel better. We don't stop and do that sometimes. Okay. You literally have to have a list of things that brings you joy. And if you don't know that, that is part one that you have to do is do some soul search and figure out what makes me happy, what fills my cup, what fills me up with joy, makes me smile um, and just warms me up. Write those things down and be sure to engage in some of those things. Go places, find out places, find out um, conversations that you can have about mental health if you need to know more about something. Identify what you need to know more about if it's ADD, depression, anxiety, bipolar, um, things like that, and find out more information. Educate yourself. Education is so important. Contact someone, talk to a counselor. Doesn't hurt anybody to go talk to a counselor, right? You know, growing up, I learned, you know, what happens in your house stays in your house. You don't tell other people about what's going on, but you have to start talking. You have to start opening up because we can't solve these things on our own. It's, it just, it can't happen anymore because we're, we're suffering too much from many things. Um, and you can contact me. Um, if you have any questions or anything, you can contact me at drj at geniabklingenberg.com or you can visit me at www.geniabklingenberg.com. Okay. And I'll list your socials and your website and all of that under Neath the podcast in the yeah. podcast description. So if you want to stay in touch with Dr. Jania, you can. As always, I love to hear your questions, comments, show ideas. So I would love it if you stayed in touch with me too. You can reach me on the web at ease, that's E E A Z E dot com. We have a show hotline that is 801 901 7030. Thank you so much for Thank tuning in. Thank you for in. having me. I really appreciate it. I am so happy you joined me today, Dr. Jania, and I'm anxious to see your progress. Yes. My progress <laughs> in the unbreakable Grant Cardone challenge. So we'll have to stay abreast of that. But until next time, everyone, please stay in your purpose. Yes. Stay on fire. Stay in contribution and always stay at ease. Bye yes. for now. Bye. Okay.